So, um, we are going to actually be taking a look at um, the practice quiz that I gave you guys. This is just going to give you a quick little synopsis on how to do it. This is actually going to be the only video that I want you guys to watch tonight. So, don't worry about the forces video. We'll talk about that tomorrow um, in class. So, um, quiz just real quick. I like to just draw a visual. We have a 50 meter, or 50 meter um, cliff right here. We have an object, or I'm sorry, a person who... Um, I'm sorry, let me erase this, start again. Um, so we have a rock that is starting up here. It is given a velocity. We're going to call this rock A. It is given a velocity of negative 2 meters per second straight down. Then, one second later, rock B hits flight, hits a velocity down that we do not know. And we do know, though, they both hit the water at the same time time. So, in this case, the biggest thing that I would hint is visual. If I was thinking about this, I want to go through my visuals. Once I draw a good visual, I will be ready to rock. So, visual for this case is going to be really easy. We have a negative two meter per second velocity there, and this object accelerates. Negative acceleration. Why is it negative acceleration? I can draw my... Um, my motion map and you realize that the accelerations are always pointing down. It's also in free fall, so that should be a negative 9.8. And it hits at a certain time t, which we are going to label right there. That is actually what part A asks for. So that it would be really easy to solve for. We're going to do that in a second. But, um, no pun intended, a second later, um, B is released. So I'm going to make on my visual one second later B, which I'm going to draw in red here, is released and it hits at the same time. What else do I know? I know the areas, or I'm sorry, the displacements, which is the areas of these shapes, should be equal as well. So I know it must be released with a larger velocity. It has the same acceleration, so those slopes are the same. Um, and you notice that this area right here of the red shape should be equal to the area of the black shape. So we can make those two equivalent, and we will take a closer look at that going into part B of this problem. Um, so at this moment, what we are going to have to do is um, just quickly solve for part A, and I don't have enough time. Um, shoot. All right, so part A is going to actually be really simple. This is straight up things, things that we should know. What I could do is I can list all my variables. V naught is going to be negative 2 meters per second. A is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And delta X is going to be um, negative 50 meters. And in this case, we are looking for T. And so the equation that we are going to have to use is delta X is equal to one-half AT squared plus V naught T. And when I plug these things in, you realize that delta X is negative 50 meters. We have negative 4.9 meters per second squared T squared plus our V naught, which is negative 2 meters per second T. In order to solve this for T, what you are going to actually have to do is use the quadratic formula. So in this case, we have negative 4.9 meters per second squared T squared uh, minus 2 meters per second t. Got to move the 50 on over, so we have plus 50 meters. That all equals 0. Now it's in the quadratic more formula format. Put it in there. Um, and you can get what t is equal to. I'm going to let you guys do that math. So that is part A. Part B is actually kind of interesting. Um, you could look at the areas, like I said before, and do that. The other thing that I want you to realize is we do have a lot of information. Um, we don't know the initial velocity. That's still a question mark. However, we know the acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, we know the delta x. Delta x of this flight is still negative 50 meters. And we do know the time. The time for b, well, if we go back up here, Keep in mind, time is referring to when it began to where it, when it ended. So in this case, our time is going to be our t that we solved from for up here 
minus one second because well it started one second later so we'd have to do that and then guess what we use the same formula delta x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t and we'd all be off to the races and we can actually then solve for v naught from there so that is part b and part c oh man we are just flying through this um Part C is going to be really easy. All we have to do in this case is now we know their v naughts, now we know the delta x's, uh, now we know the times, and uh, we need to solve for v. You can even throw acceleration in there, and you can say a is equal to negative 9.8. Um, this is different for each one of the problems. This is the same for each one of them, negative 50, and time is going to be different for each one of them. So if I were you, I would do one for rock a and one for rock B, two equations, in order to solve for that V there. Um, I will have these numbers in place for us tomorrow, so look for um, when you walk into class, I will have this. If I told you to do the force video, I'm actually going to nix that, and we're just going to start with forces the minute after we're done going over this quiz. Thanks for listening. Have a good night, and uh, yeah, be ready for some forces tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, we're just going to quickly go through this quiz that I gave out. Um, I thought this would be really helpful to do this tonight, and you guys can rewatch this if you have any questions about it. I can uh, answer those tomorrow in class. So, um, looking at our Unit 3 Quiz 4 that I gave out, we have a situation where Rock A is being tossed down at a velocity of 2 meters per second. Um, and you notice that one second later we throw this object down we don't know its velocity. That's something that we're going to look for. We're going to call that rock B just to make life easier. And they both hit the ground at the same time. So in order to really wrap my head around this, um, the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a visual. A lot of people just like to jump right into the equations. And again, I don't think the equations make sense. So you link that to a visual. So I'm just going to draw out a visual to help myself out. First thing that I know on my V versus T graph, I'm going to label it down, is I have a 2 meter per second um, velocity. And that velocity is going to have an acceler. I mean, it's accelerate. It's going to have a negative acceleration since it is falling. I'm sorry, since if we take a look at the motion map, you notice that the arrows are going to get larger and larger and larger and larger going down. So the acceleration is negative. It's negative 9.8 because it's a falling object. And at some time t, that's actually what part a asks for, we are trying to figure that, um, yeah, what time does it get down there? But um, the thing that throws a lot of people off is there's another object in the mix, right? Um, object b, so let me label this one as a. Actually, I'll be a little colorful, and uh, we'll... We'll get a different color in here. Let's go red for object B. Object B at one second. So one second later, it's going to start to go down. However, I do know that it hits the ground at the same time. So it will get to this T mark and be done. The other thing that I know is the areas of both of these shapes should be the same because the displacements are the same. So if I were to set this up, I don't want to do that. If I were to set this up, I know it must have a larger velocity to begin with. And if I draw this out, you'll notice that it has the same slope because, well, the accelerations are the same. And this is object B. And you'll notice that this area, this red area, should be equal to the black area in this case. So that is one thing that I am keeping in the back of my head. So um, let us do the simple part first. Let us take a look at part A. It asks the question, in A, it asks the question, well, how long after the release does the first um, stone uh, hit the water? So at this case, I know my initial velocity is negative 2 meters per second. Uh, my acceleration at this point is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and I know my delta x. Oh yeah, delta x is equal to negative 50 meters. Remember, it is falling, so the displacement is um, negative. Sorry, I'm writing crooked. Um, so in this case, all we got to do is pick out the right equation to figure out that time t. t is equal to what? Um, so we're going to use delta x equals 1 half a t squared plus v naught t in order to calculate this. Um, you'll notice that I have a negative 50 meters here. 
is equal to negative 4.9 meters per second squared t squared plus um, negative 2t. Um, and what I'm realizing right now is um, in order to solve for this time, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So um, we would set this all equal to 0, and 0 is equal to negative 4.9 meters per second squared t squared um, minus 2t um, plus 50 meters. And in this case, I'm going to um, set up my quadratic formula and solve for t. If you do this, you get t. That is the answer to part a. Yay. I'm not going to do the math. You guys can play around with that. Um, again, math is not the biggest part of this. I don't want to do that. I want to go back here. Thank you. Um, so, part B. Part B actually gets kind of entertaining because now what I'm asking is the initial velocity of B. And we'll go back to red just to keep it colorful. So it's asking what is that initial velocity? Well, um, we know the acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, we know that delta x for this object is still negative 50 meters. However, we don't have another known until we do part A. And you realize part A tells you t. However, if we were looking for the time frame, um, t in this case, t for b, is going to be whatever your answer was from part A, which I'm going to call it t from a. However, you need to subtract that one second off of there because if you look at it, our graph starts there and it goes there. So we need to get rid of that one second because that's technically what that um, this equation that we would use in order to solve this, which again is going to be delta x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t. Um, we're solving for v naught. We have everything else. You will notice, though, that this is just the area of that graph. And in order to really understand this, well, what we need to do is we need to make sure that that one second is chopped off because we are not talking about this area on over here. That is not what we want. So that would be how you'd solve for B. Um, now, solving for C should be crumb cake. Let me jump back into... Um, don't you want to move down? There we go. Um, solving for C, C asks, what is the velocity of each stone the instant it hits the water? Well, in this case, we know V naught now for both of them. We know A for both of them. And we know the times for both of them. And it's asking for what is the velocity. So if I were you, I would go back and just list the things that we know from before. And um, you would do this for rock A. And you'd do this for rock B. And um, you'd be done if you could do that. So take a look at it. I will give you the numbered answers tomorrow, but that is the process and how you solve it. Make sure after you watch this video that you watch the next one about forces to introduce the unit. Thanks and have a great night.